Today, I'll show you how to knit a garter stitch half pie shawl, the more wearable, quicker cousin of the famous pie shawl pioneered by Elizabeth Zimmerman, who I researched a little bit to give proper credit for this video and discovered she was born in 1910. So your girl doesn't have an Instagram, but she does have several amazing books still available on Amazon, and it just reminded me what a time-honored and timeless tradition we have here with knitting. There's always more wisdom to learn from. Anywho, back to our half pie shawl. So the basics of the pie shawl are to cast on a small number of stitches, knit a small number of rows, then double that stitch count, double that row count, and repeat doubling your stitch count and row count until your shawl is as wide as you'd like. This half pie shawl is the same concept, except we will always double plus one our stitches. More on that in a minute. The beauty of the pie shawl is that the stitch increases get further and further apart as your shawl grows. So you wind up with these big bands of knitting that you can work really intricate lace patterns across and not have to worry about the stitch count changing. For my shawl, I wanted to do a straight garter stitch to give a blank canvas for you to work off of if you want to add your own lace pattern into the bigger sections. I'll link a few beautiful garter stitch lace patterns you can try out down below. Also, I had a little ulterior motive with this pattern because I had this ball of shawl in a cake from Lion Brand, and I wanted to see exactly how much shawl knits up from just one cake. So I knew I'd have to be flexible with my design in order to use up as much yarn as possible. Now, let's get started on our half pie shawl with a garter tab cast on. I'm starting out with straight needles and will change to longer circular needles as my stitch count grows. I'm going to start with a slip knot at the end of my yarn with a tiny little tail, so I can be sure I'm using up as much of this cake as possible. I'm going to knit on two more stitches by inserting my needle into that first stitch knitwise, and pulling up a long loop, and placing it back on my left needle. Now you have two stitches on your needle, and you can knit into that stitch you just made. Pull up a long loop and place it on the left needle to cast on a total of three stitches. And we'll begin the garter tab by knitting those three stitches. Then knit another row. Continue knitting for a total of four rows, you'll see two garter ridges. And we'll pick up two stitches along the top edge here, one for each garter ridge. Then pick up a stitch in each of your three cast on stitches. and I kind of loosened up my slip knot to really get under that last stitch. Now you'll have eight stitches total, which account for a three stitch border on either side and two stitches in the middle. This will be important when we do our increases, but for now, knit one row. Next is our first increase row, which we'll always start by knitting our three edge stitches. Then yarn over, knit one. Repeat yarn over, knit one to the last three stitches, yarn over again, and knit those last three stitches. Now we've increased from two center stitches to five. Remember that double plus one I mentioned earlier? Two times two is four, plus one is five. So we have five stitches now between our three stitch borders. The row doubling hasn't quite begun yet because we're working up this little setup section. So we knit one row after the garter tab, did an increase row, and now we'll knit three rows before the next increase. You could have also knit two rows after the garter tab before the increases. Then this would be four rows, then eight rows, and so on. 
There's a little wiggle room if you need a different number of rows in a section later on for a lace or stitch pattern you want to do. So I've knit my three rows and it's time for another increased row. The increase pattern will become more obvious here. We'll knit the three edge stitches, yarn over, knit one, repeat, yarn over, knit one, to the last three stitches, then you'll do one last yarn over and knit the three edge stitches. Those center five stitches have increased to 11, double the five plus one. Now we'll also double the last row count. So we knit three rows last time, now we'll knit six rows. I've knit my six rows here and I wanna show you a shorthand way to count your garter stitch rows. It'll be even more helpful the bigger your sections get. I know that I have six rows here because I see three garter ridges starting above my yarn over row. Then I can add them to the garter ridges on the other side. There are also three ridges on this side, so three plus three is six rows. If there were two garter ridges on the back here, then I would know I just had five rows and that I needed to knit one more. Just a little row counting tip. So I'm gonna knit three, yarn over, knit one to the last three stitches, yarn over and knit three again to increase to 23 stitches with my three stitch edges on either side. So I think you've got the idea now, but I did mention earlier that I would switch to circulars once I outgrew these needles, so I worked up to that point to show you how easy that is. This is the long circular I'm using. It was a 36 inch cord, which was about 43 inches total with the needle tips attached. And to switch, all you gotta do is ditch that right straight needle and swap it for one of the circular tips. Then knit with it normally. It doesn't matter which row you do this on, I'm doing it here on an increase row. Then once you've knit all your stitches off of that left needle, you can put it aside and continue on in the pattern, knitting back and forth with your circular needles. Continue doubling your rows and double plus one-ing your stitches following this graphic here. Now I couldn't fit all the numbers on this graphic, but you will then do 24 rows followed by an increase to 95 stitches, then 48 rows, and an increase to 191 stitches. And I was in the middle of my 96 row section when I realized I was running out of yarn. I weighed the yarn that I had left, knit a row, and weighed it again, and figured out I only had about five rows left in that ball. I wanted to finish the shawl off with a ruffle edge, which I knew required one more increase row and a knit row before binding off. So I decided to do my increase row right there at about row 58 of my final section. Then, in a thrilling game of yarn chicken to the finish line, I started my stretchy bind off by knitting the first stitch, knitting the next stitch, and inserting my left needle back through the front of those stitches, perfectly positioning myself to knit those two together through the back loop. Lots of tension on that working yarn makes it easier. Again, knit one, slip the left needle through, and knit two together through the back loop. This stretchy bind off is a great way to finish off shawls, especially ones with a ruffly edge. It really frees up the tension to let those ruffles loose. One last thing I wanted to mention is the top edge of your shawl will not be straight. This is just the nature of those pie shawl increases, so don't fret about it. And there you have it, a garter stitch half pie shawl blank canvas for you to add your own touches to or knit as is for some very easy, relaxing TV knitting. I'll have all sorts of resources linked down below, including a link to the printable written pattern on my blog for you to reference anytime you'd like. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.